A very good morning to you on this Tuesday morning. It's a little bit overcast out there. <laughs> I have turned the weather cam on, but I'm, um, I'm going to have have a look if it's working uh, uh, correctly in a minute, and I can show you. We had so nice sunshine for the last um, few days. It's been wonderful. So it's a bit overcast today. Let me know how's the weather. It's bright. It's bright outside. So let me know. How is that? Oh, yes, our weather cam is working, so I can show you. So that's how the weather in my end. <laughs> Have a look, it's a bit overcast. Hopefully, it will brighten up later on. It's still bright, but we'll see. Let me know how the, how's the weather where you are. And um, I love this weather update in the morning. Right, today we are going to make an elastic bracelet. It's quite simple stringing. We're going to add a hanger bead onto it, and we're going to... Um, Turn a couple of loops and add like a um, um, rose bead, a hematite rose bead, and a crystal bead to it. Because what I really, oh hold on, let me, let, let me go back to me. What I really wanted to do is to create something which has got more of a high street look. Create something which is more. Um, if, if you sell your jewelry, this will have appeal to I guess more people because. Like when you look at in in a sort of um, fashion jewelry, what you can buy in like even supermarkets now have like canters and all that sorts of bits of pieces. This style of jewelry is always there. So do um, so so do you have a look into it now? We have put a lovely bundle together for you today, and I'm just gonna bring up the details just in a sec. We also have an add-on to it if you want to add on like the lovely Shambhala beads. And <laughs> Simon's been hiding them from me because <laughs> he knows I'm a magpie and I would I love sparkle. So he's 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 been sneakily hiding these um these really lovely sparkly beads from me. Right, let me just bring up um the website and i'm going to very quickly take you on there and show you what we have on offer then we're going to go straight down into the demo i hope everybody's doing fantastic this morning second day of the week almost almost end of april i, I looked at it this morning it's already the 20th right popping over to the website so by now you know the drill By now, you know the drill that what you need to do, you go onto the website and you go into categories, you go into video tutorials. Um, there is today's one, yesterday we were making beaded beads, um, last week we were working with rings and all sorts of one. Uh, have a look at back some of the other ones, what we've done before. Now I'm going to go into hematite um, one today. So what we did is we put a large bundle together and this bundle is going to make you 10 bracelets and you got everything there, what you need. You got 5% of the hematite um, beads, the 8 millimeter hematite beads. You got 10, but what I did, I given you a mixed hanger beads. So they're not all going to look like the same. You got your pins, you got your jump rings, you got crystal beads, you got everything there. And I matched the colors up for you completely. So they, they, it's going to look really nice and professional. Right now, <laughs> going on to the sparklies, um, the little, um, let me just actually pop into your here, um, I was just talking, so we, we made one of each color and I have to thank the lovely Brenda helping to make up those uh, uh, samples for me, so we made one of each color, they are really, they're, they're really nice, uh, but I'll show you them in real life just in a sec, um, a really quick make as well, so the sparklies, now I love these Shambhala style beads, they are like female beads and I'm going to show you show it to them. Uh, actually, let's not even look at them on the website. They are pound each, but if you buy 10, you get a 40% discount and you can mix and match all the different colors. So you can have two amethysts, you can buy a dark turquoise, three fuchsias. You can really mix and match the colors, how you add them into your basket. They are beautiful in quality. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight down to my mat and just, just make sure the camera is on. Go down to my mat and uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you the bracelets in real life and I'm going to show you the uh, the beads themselves. So there we go. Then I'm going to give you a little bit more light. 
there's light coming in from the window but i'm going to give you a tiny let's turn this off a little bit so you can see it better there we go so these shambhala beads i'm just going to show you this really really quickly now these ones you don't need a lot in your bracelet you only need one or two and it's really going to sparkle them up i'm gonna shall i include them in the make today let me know in the comments if you want me to include them and then i'm gonna again i'm gonna put them in they are really, really gorgeous. They're just so much sparkle comes out of it. And when you look at an overall bracelet, you only really need like one or two beads in there to sparkle it up. Like they're very similar in size. So the hematite is eight millimeter. These ones like nine millimeter ish really, but they're very similar in size. So they're going to be, they're just going to go in with the bracelet. They look, um, they look really nice so let me know if you want me to include them in the make and then i will do so the made up bracelets i the colors are put together in a bundle and i'm going to show you the raw materials just in a second so i add the champagne gold i added a rainbow now you can mix and match the colors so you don't just have to use the green on its own you could have a few rainbow and then green or blue and silver so champagne gold and silver they they are your sort of traditional colors i added the blue because i love the blue you know me i wear a lot of blue as well oh, paul is saying yes please or two very sparkly or to the um oh, i will add those in them in the make today and then um so that they are your sort of going with everything colors your your champagne gold and your silver then i go on for blue because i love glue i go on for green because if you're not a blue person then you will love the green but i'm sure you're gonna know somebody in your friends or family who will like the blue and then i go on for the rainbow because the rainbow just sort of fabulous and it goes with everything and what i love about the rainbow that this one i can wear it with golds i can wear it with pinks i can wear it with blues i can wear it with uh, greens and it goes with everything as well and i love it how they just have that little decoration hanging down on your bracelet from the hang and we just make it a little bit more interesting now this does move about so it doesn't really matter where it stands up i like to usually have this dangle a bit on the outside of my wrist but really it's up to you how you wear it you can stack them up so i'm going to add the gold on here as well so you can even wear two or three of them at the same time but each kit is going to make you for 18.99 and it's down from 25 pound we make you 10 bracelet so it's one pound 89 per bracelet i think that for hematite beads beads that's really really good value angela is saying not bad in scotland but there is no sun so those are the actually i showed you the samples so i don't really need to go and um, show all these but that's the long strands what you get in the kit you also get these lovely hematite rose beads now these ones i matched up so you get green silver champagne gold you get the blue and you get the rainbow as well so they matching your strands 100 percent and then oops i just put everything next to actually i will need them so don't put them away just move them out and then i went along and i got the crystals that and i matched the crystals as well so you can like you got gold rainbow silver blue um and um green in there as well green play in there as well to match your bracelet so that's the, your little decoration now here is the lovely hanger beads now make sure you got a selection so not just one kind you've got all sorts of different ones in the kit there you get two of each but depending on what's available or what they got most in stock they're going to pick it but you're going to get a selection so your beads are going to be different and then what you your what's holding things together is the eye pin but the, the head pin and the jumping as well you get those as well and of course the elastic strand so you can make the whole make right okay so how many how many beads per bracelet and you kept wrinkling them so this one my wrist is quite large but i usually use half the strand for a bracelet but if you got a smaller wrist you're probably gonna make more out of it because my, my wrist is quite chunky and i like it loose as well so this one just to put you in perspective let me just measure this across so this one is um going to be like 21 centimeters by the time um if, if it was flat out which is just 
in inches so the half the bracelet is just over four inch so just eight inch eight inch eight inch and a tiny bit and this one is two four six eight ten twelve twenty twenty six beads on there so there we go right what color shall we demo what color shall we play with we got just it's this you there is no choice in a bundle you get all of them and um You get all of them in the bundle, so it's depending on which one you want to make first. We will make that one, so let me know which one you want me. The blue looks lovely, Camille is saying, yeah, I love the blue as well. I want I want to make a blue one with these, these lovely Shambhalas. So thank you, Jitty. Thank you, Camille. Saying the blue one because that was my favourite. That's why I really wanted to meet. But thinking about it, we could make... We'd like because you can mix and match those beads. We could make like a rainbow section of sparkles on the back. <laughs> now I'm I'm like I just had an idea and I'm just gonna like put them out here. They're not like we haven't got a, like or a red or yellow in there, so it's not like a true rainbow rainbow. But I think it's gonna have. I got everything. I'm missing this one. Maybe that way we could have a section at the back with all the sparkles. What do you think? That would look really good as well. Or oh, and the blue. Don't forget this blue. But I got two blue and I want to use it in the other one. Maybe that way. That would look good. Like on a, on a rainbow bracelet as well. There are so many different things you could do. I'm going to use this, these blue ones, and we're going to make a blue bracelet. So if I'm saying 26 beads, because I'm gonna gonna use these two, so I only need 24 beads, and I need to divide it 24 by three, which is gonna give me eight beads, which is great. So I'm gonna put eight of the hematite one on. I'm gonna put one of these on, another eight hematite, one of those, and then another eight, and then my hanger bead. All right, so let's get some of these beads off and I'm going to straight go on and um, we, we get this is going to be such a quick make so we might even get to the rainbow one as well we see we might we might even make that one as well although I'm going to missing the blue from it but never mind let me just make it less of a rainbow but like I could equally use these colors in this I don't have to use a blue one I could use three there's so there's so many different things you could do but they're nice they're really really nice they just sparkle your uh, pattern up right taking the elastic i'm going to work off the reel so i'm not cutting it off yet and i'm going to go ahead and start adding my bits so i want to start right at the beginning because when i knot them together i do want the knot to disappear into my hanger beads so i'm going to start and put on eight of these lovely hematite beads themselves i'm just looking at why is my mouse not working so i can pull up the um pull up the comments lucy's gathering um the comments for me in the chat and my mouse wasn't turned on so probably that's why so two three and i don't need to add anything to the end of the elastic because i'm using a rand elastic you know like before we have used the flat elastic which you need to use with a big eye needle this one is more of a solid like a rand piece of elastic and it doesn't um doesn't need anything it's a little bit stiffer and it just goes through the beads just like that then can you Close those ones a bit because the sun is coming in too much now. And I'm going to add my sparkle bead. And I'm going to go ahead. Actually, now thinking, I'm not even, I'm not going to go with that blue. I'm going to go with this one. Shall we go with this one? This one is more of a darker color. So I think it's just going to merge into the color of the hematite beads a little bit more than the blue one. The blue one would stand out more. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with this one. Well, this is a beauty when you're making your own bracelets or own jewellery. You can always do whatever you like. And I haven't glued anything. I haven't 
you know knotted anything together so I can keep I can go back and change it if I want to oh Lucy's saying I really love the sparkle beads me too we had them many many years ago and then this is the things how things go in and out of fashion they perfect for um macrame as well and I will do some point I'll, I'll do a macrame project with them or something they're perfect for macrame they're perfect for loads of different things they're just perfect to put into jewelry because they're so so sparkly so let me just pop this last one on and I bring it bring one up to you like quite close come on camera I want you to maybe not the right color I'm gonna focus any of these better just break it down. It's trying to focus in on my hand and that's good. So can you see there's how many little crystals, little crystals are put into that bead. And no matter how you look at it, it's just really, really sparkly. So I'm going to add the other one of this and I'm going to add another eight. Hematite on there. Then we're going to choose a hanger bead and we're going to knot it together. That's three. The elastic size I'm using is 0.8, which is what I use for most of my bracelets. So we stock 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and one millimeter. If I'm using like really heavy, large beads, then I would use the one mil. Like I'm talking about 12 mil upwards. And if I'm using small beads, like I want to just use some seed beads, then I will use the 0.6, but majority of the time, I always use the 0.8. Oh, Jen, thank you so much for the stars. It's really, really appreciated. Right, okay, so I've got to do, that's, that's my bracelet done. I'm gonna add the hanger bead on, just like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and knot it. Now, there's different ways you can knot your bracelets and some people knot it with a surgeon's knot, some people, uh, uh, depending on what elastic I work with as well. Let me just zoom on this, on this one. So when I'm working with a round elastic, I more tend to do a surgeon's, surgeon's knot, which I'm just going to show you. When I'm working with flat elastic, I'd rather do three half a knot. And um, that, that seems to be the trick for me. So doing... A surgeon's knot I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this on there so just start my knot um, the normal way how you would you start it then I'm gonna go back from the other side and instead of just bringing this end around once which what we do with a normal knot I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna bring it around one more time now you can see my finger is in here because I'm trying to keep the tension I don't want the elastic to come on loose underneath it and my bracelet to be too loose so I just want a little bit of tension not a lot but just a little bit of tension in it and you know you're doing a surgeon's knot because you can see the ends have wrapped around more than once. And when I pull this up nice and tight, can you see that is just sort of bites into each other and makes a larger knot. Now, we don't really need to worry about the knot so much because we got a hanger bead with a large hole here. So I'm just going to make sure I'm applying little pulls. I'm not doing very big pulls because you know me, I can pull and my elastic will snap. It happened in the past. And that, that's a surge, surgeon's knot. If you want to do a normal knot, I often sort of just go ahead and push it down with my finger. So that's really nice and secure. If you want to do a normal knot, you can. But in that case, I would do three half a knot. So I would go, I'm not going to put any more on there, but we'd go left over right and pull it up. And then I will go the other way to complete my knot. Just like that, so that is one knot, and then I would do another half one on the top of it. Now, as you can see, with the round elastic, if I let it go, can you see the knot is coming undone? Because this is has got a much more slippery surface. And what we need to do, whichever knot, even if you do this knot, and I will go in and add another half a knot on the top of that. Let me just pull this up nice and tight. Should have, should have left a longer end there, just like a little stubby end we're going to cut this off anyway we're not going to use it so just adding another half a knot on the top of there and then pull it pull it too tight so because this 
either this type of knot or the surgeon's knot, your rand elastic is quite slippery. So over time, if I don't knot it, this can come undone. The, the knots can slip apart. So what we need to do is to take a tiny bit of nail varnish, or it doesn't matter what brand, this is just out of boots. It's the 60 second super shine, but that's doesn't really matter if it's you can be if you only got colored ones at home you could use that as well it's not going to matter because it's going to be inside that hanger bead itself so any cheap and i think i had uh before this one the one the one i can't find um i had it out of um i think it was primark and it was like a pound right so i want to take most of the nail varnish off of the brush so only really want to have a tiny bit on the end there and what I am going to do I'm going to pull this out so I usually hold this between with, with my index finger and my middle finger and pull it and hold my bracelet with my thumb and my ring finger and pull this out and I'm just going to brush on the top of that knot at the front and on the back just adding a tiny bit of nail varnish. Now, if you do left more nail varnish on there, which I'm going to come back and just grab some more, and you brush on the top, can you see like how much nail varnish just went on there? That's no problem. And that's why we're doing it above the knot. If you got the, if you got a large amount of nail varnish there, and uh, you can always take the brush and move that around. What I usually do, I just hold my bracelet and let gravity, let gravity take the nail varnish down towards the knot. And then I will put it to the side and, hold on, which one is my scissor? This one. I got a scissor just for cutting a glue <laughs> with, with um, well, I put nail varnish in it. So I would leave, put this to the side, maybe, Actually, let's put it to the side because we need to make those, um, we need to make our charms. Just cut this other knot off of it. There we go. So, I'm going to make, until this is dries a little bit, I'm going to make my little charm to go on my hanger beads. So, I'm going to take my hat pins. I need a couple of them. Now, the ones we added in the kit are 30 millimeters, so probably we might need to cut the little one a, little, a bit, but hopefully you don't need to cut it too much. Right, so because I'm doing the blue one, I'm going to take the blue rose and I am going to find the blue crystal from the crystal beads. So all my bracelet is matching up completely. I'm going to go ahead and just make a loop on the top. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and let me just grab the cutters as well. So I'm going to pop the bead on there. I'm going to turn the loop slightly to the side just to sort of have that bend at the bottom so when I curl it back it will have a nicer uh, sort of a neater finish and then I'm gonna go ahead you don't have to bend it if you don't want to you can curl it and then re rearrange your loop so I'm gonna go ahead and I only want probably about a third of an inch or just under a centimeter here and I'm gonna cut this and then I'm gonna go ahead and you can see on your pliers that you do have the you do have a smaller a smaller size at the tip and you, you do have a larger size at the middle so find whereabouts you want to do your loops and i'm i'm usually towards the thinner end but um not not quite right then so i'm going to hold it so there's no wire poking around at at this end and I'm going to curl it back down on myself. Now, I like to curl away from myself, but some people like to curl towards themselves. It's depending on what sort of mobility do you have in your wrist, it's easier for you to do. Don't be afraid to stop. Even if you take your pliers out, you can go back in and just go and curl it more. And then you create, that's what we're looking for. We're creating that little loop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do that on the crystal very quickly as well and I almost lo lost the crystal I almost rolled away here 
Charlotte send some stars as well. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Now, because this one is a smaller bead, and I am, can you see, like, it's a little bit harder to hold on to it and make that initial bend. So you like, really have to grip, grip on your bead. So if that happens, what I usually do, I hold it with the very tip of my chain nose pliers or vice versa, hold it with the very tip of my round nose pliers and get another pair of pliers and bend it over just to make life a little bit easier. I know I'm gonna end up with a tiny bit of gap here, but um, to be more kind to your hands, um, if you are not, not gonna see it anyway, because it's such a small part of your um, bracelet. Again, I'm gonna cut this. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll this down. There we go. And creating my second loop. And then I'm gonna take my, I need another one. So I'm gonna take my chain nose and flat nose. I'm gonna open up this jump ring. Just like that. I'm gonna add both of the charms to it. And I'm gonna add this onto the hanger bead. So hanger bead is a bead which has got a loop on there and close it back in. So I twisted it apart and I'm twisting it back in. And now because it's been a few minutes, we can trim the ends of these. And quite simply, um, can you see, I'm gonna leave properly about two, three millimeters and then just cut it and pull that end in right into our hanger bead. And that's it. How easy is to make more of a high shit looking bracelet for yourself or, or, or to give away, or especially if you like making jewelry to sell, I'm just zoom out a tiny bit, making jewelry to sell, that's a real, and these ones, but like, you know, people will pay, I don't know, depending on where you sell it, but you know, five, six, seven, eight pounds for it without thinking because it's really nice and easy to make. Nice for male jewelry as well. So if it was, if I was making this for male jewelry, which I could do, I for I can use this dark blue color, or any of the colors you could use for it. But perhaps instead of adding a rose and a crystal, I would add a little skull or something like that, which is better for, uh, or maybe I don't know. But if they're in it, if they're into that sort of thing, but that would be more masculine in my head, I guess. So maybe just add a round bead, or maybe just don't add a. Um, a bead on it at all, just make it all the, going all the way around. Paul is saying, um, beautiful, this is saying gorgeous, and thank you so much. Um, yeah, so very, very easy, and sometimes doing bracelets like this, even if like add the little sparkle into it, or, or you don't add the sparkle into it, I think it's just a great way. Like, can you see the little sparkle? It's just really going to, you know, focus your eye when you're moving your bracelet just to add that tiny bit of hidden um, awesome, awesomeness, I guess, for your bracelet. It's just really pretty. Just a tiny bit of pretty. And then you got your little charm there as well. I, I really do love it. So you can have an experiment and do whichever style you like and add as much or as less to it. And of course, I could have added, if I really wanted the those ones to show up, I could have added a really light color in there, then it would be really shine up. Um, I have learned hanger beads and shambhala beads today. Oh, bless you. Yes, they're shambhala style beads, and they are, the hanger beads are these beads, but they got like a little loop on them. And then you can, they, you, sometimes you can have them with larger holes and sometimes they're the same hole as normal ones. And they are great, not just for bracelets. You can use them for in the middle of necklaces as well. And you can add a pendant on the top of it. There is so many things what you could do with them. They are really great little, they, they're great little thing to have in your stash. But to make a bracelet, just to a little bit more, just a round elastic bracelet, adding a hanger bead, with a couple of decoration beads and a couple of focal beads on there, I think makes your bracelet even more professional. The flat round hematite bead for male charm, if not the scars, not not in scars. Yeah, you could do all sorts of different things. If you wanted to, you don't you didn't have to add charms like this on there. You could add like um metallic charms like a dog or a cat or a teacup or a, a spanner or um, 
anything like the spiders you could do all, all, all sorts of different things right if you do have a question please put a cue in front of it so i can identify it and make sure i answer it for you before i go off we do have it's only half past 10 like <laughs> it was such an easy technique so shall we play with a little bit more of these beads and make a bracelet where we add more than one color in there do like more of a rainbow i know i used the darker one up but uh, never mind we will shall we do it with the rainbow or rainbow or silver silver would look nice as well so let me know. We're just going to string it up and, and see how we go in um, which time. But um, we've got loads of time. I don't, I, don't, I don't mind hanging around and making another one. Maybe that needs to go there. Maybe like that. And the purple. And there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And obviously we had the tenth one. We used it up. So, shall we use the rainbow or shall we use the silver? And just go down. Silver, rainbow, yes, they am play, Camille is saying. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, all, all the other work, they just, that, that can just stay. I just stay and play. I love it. This is why I love, li actually like the live so much because I can just do what I love doing and just sit down and play with beads. Right, so silver. There's more people seeing the silver, so we can use the silver with it as well. So, if we're aiming for 26 beads and hang beads, we could do a slightly different um, design this time. So, I'm going to add the hang bead. Well, let's use this different design. I'm going to add the hang bead to the side here. And because I like to wear my little decoration on the side of my wrist just here. And then these could go on the top of it. So I'm going to go ahead. Shall I add a different... I'll just take these off. We could add a hematite bead in between every one of those sparkly beads. I'm not sure about this color. So I'm just going to pop that to the side for a sec. And then add that. In like that so we could add a bead in between to make them sort of work a little bit more or you could we could bunch them together do let me know what do you think would look better if you put a hematite bead in between or we just leave them plain and have them together I went to, I just went to order and it's already out of stock. Uh, Margaret, let me know what's out of stock because I know the, the girls were making up so much the other day that it, it, there's no way they can go out of stock unless somebody gone crazy. But there's no way it can go out of stock. Oh, Leanne, can you get in contact with Simon and see what's happening with that? Because mm -hmm. maybe they didn't add the right stock on the system, I don't know. But we, we work on it. Bunch them together, together. So we need to do some work. We'll finish later. You will be able to watch after we finish. Okay, we'll bunch them together then. So in that case, I'm going to add one hematite bead right next to the hanger bead. And we're going to bunch these together. I'm going to start stringing it up. And if you don't like it, of course, we can just take... Oh, look, this color. We missed this color out. I know there was something missing. I'm going to go start with the hanger bead because that's going to be my first bead to hide my knot. And I'm going to start adding these on. And we see, you can always swip swap the beads about, so it doesn't really matter. The, uh, we can have a look. But they're really nice and sparkly. I don't know if I want to add them like that. This this dark bead just throwing me a little bit. <laughs> like what? I don't know what to do with that dark bead. Or maybe maybe like that. I just don't, I don't, I'm not sure about this dark bead in there. But if I go like let's go. What about like that? Yeah, let's do that. Add the dark ones together. Yeah. I think sometimes by just swapping one bead around can make a really huge difference. Just one bead. 
right and that one and we haven't got that very last bead that very dark bead because you've used that one up for the other bracelet but i think we have got oh my god look at that we got more than enough sparkle there I, this is the thing this is the beads that i just want to I just want to sit there and I just want to look at the beads. I just want to be a magpie and look at all these beads. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So, we're going to need another 15 beads. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let me just get the beads out. So, I'm making sure that I'm not... Um... Get back in stock. Oh, Leanne is saying Simon sorted it. They are back in stock now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and add my other 15 on there. They look, they, those sparkles look really good. I think I was definitely in a previous life as a magpie. <laughs> Still are. I got in a magpie. <laughs> anything sparkly sometimes I just want to get all these sparkly things out and put it on the table and just look at them it's pleasing pleasing to the pleasing to your soul I guess the sparkly things I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of these on there and then we're just gonna go and knot our elastic together and repeat the process. Oh, what we could do here, instead of adding the rose on the bottom, we could add a sparkle bead, or we could add a sparkle bead and the rose. I'm about to do that one, and the rose and the crystal. So we could have three little bunched things up at the end. But we have a little play with that just in a sec. Ruth is saying, morning kitty and beady chat. <laughs> Bless you. You are making a lovely elastic bracelet. More like a, I get a high street look. More commercial look. Right, so I added all of my beads on there. I'm going to just cut this end. And I'm going to knot this together. So I'm going to do a surgeon's knot again. So I'm just going to take it under and pull it through. Then I'm going to take it under once. I'm going to take it under twice and then pull this up nice and tight. And I'm going to apply little pulls just like that to tighten up my knot. I'm not going to do big pulls because if you do big pulls, you stress the elastic and it can break. And I did it in one of the lives not that long ago. I was demonstrating, you don't want to do a big pull. And as I was saying, you don't want to do a big pull. I pulled it and it's all broke. So just want little pulls to tighten up that knot. That's it. Now I'm going to apply my nail varnish on there just a tiny bit. And then we're going to go ahead and add some beads to the hanger beads. There we go. Just making sure. So when I'm applying the, sorry, I was out of shop. When I'm applying the nail varnish, I am not applying it to the bottom. I don't want to add any nail varnish to this part of my bracelet because once the nail varnish dries, this part can get, become brittle and it can snap. I'm only applying it on the other side, on the top of the knots. So the bottom knot is hasn't got any, the first half of the knot hasn't got anything um, anything on there, like any, any glue or nail varnish. Right, okay, so what we're going to add on to the hanger bead I think, shall we do all three of them? I have got a few sparklers left. Simon only, <laughs> he bought me some home, but he didn't bring me home many because he, he knew, he knew 100% if he brings him brings it home to for me to play with, that will be it, they will be all gone. Um, you have time to make another one, only use 10 minutes. Yeah, they are really, really quick makes. Yeah, so we're gonna add, shall we add one of these ones here at the bottom? as well onto it so we're going to have three on this so the kit what we're selling today is contains five strand of the hematite eight millimeter round beads which are these ones so you got silver you got gold you got blue you got 
green and you've got a rainbow in there. These beads are on extra, but they are offered on the website. They are pound each, but you, if you buy 10 of them, you get them for um, six pound. And you can mix and match all the colors. So you could put in like three pinks and two blues and whatever way you want to do it. Right. Let me just turn these little loops very quickly. I feel like my camera moved a little bit. Hold on. Sorry. One sec. Just move this back up. There we go. And I'm just going to turn the top. Now, when I do... When I need to turn loops, and I need to turn a lot of loops, what I usually do, I just pop the beads inside them, and each one of them, and I just turn that top, and I, and I put them down onto the mat. And then, so that I'm a batch doing them. So, first step is I'm putting the pins in and turning the top. Second step, I'm going to go in with my cutters, and I'm going to cut each one of those to the right size. Just turn the cutter around the right size I need that to be. And then third step is when I actually go in and I curl the ends down. So you could prepare loads of, you could prepare hundreds of beads just by adding the pin in and turning the top. And because you turn the top, this is not going to fall out anymore. They're going to stay in there. And then you will go and cut them all. And then I would go and turn the loops for me that just makes it so much easier and it makes it quicker actually and i would do and mina she's got like a big bunch of like a big um tub of beads she turned into charms and then you can go ahead and use them later on as well so when you got five minutes and i think turning loops this one is not completely shut so i'm gonna go back and then just going to turn that a little bit so you can go back and use them all up together now what I do like you know with, with, with me if I would be using and turning loops all day I would next day I would really feel it in my fingers and I would feel it here that it would be hurting so anything any technique like this little but often if you got a few beads prepared so can you see I'm twisting it apart and then I'm going to add each one of these ones on just like that and I'm going to add it to the hanger bead and close it back in so I like to if I do a bracelet where I need to turn a lot of loops or a necklace that that sort of style I go in and do the do like 20 loops a day <laughs> and then do some more the next day and I do some more the day after that and before you know it you're going to have this big batch of beads what you can use and I'm just going to go ahead and trim this and that's it our bracelet is ready <laughs> and then we could very quickly go on and make another one I love this this is definitely not going to go back to the warehouse. <laughs> I'm telling that Simon, don't expect this one back. This one is staying with me. I love it. Look, and I, and what I love about this um, color, silver color hematite, that it's the right color to like go with. I, I do like to wear like a little silver bracelet, so it just stacks in with them and it goes very nicely with anything I have already have got on. I love it. I really do love it. So what 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 do you like more? Let me know in the comment. Do you like it when it's all sparkly at the top? This one. And we just got the hematite at the bottom. Because to be honest, at the bottom, you're not going to see it that much. So you already need your sparkle features at the top. I've got my little dangles on the side there. Or do you like this style more? I'm just I'm going to pop this on as well. And oops. Or and see, this is why you need to bite. <laughs> until your new one is dry so never mind I'm, I'll make it all up I'll make it all up after life or you like this style more where you just only got one shambhala in there no that's not the one this is the one actually I'm not gonna put it on I'm not gonna pull it up because I know that um the new one is just doesn't hasn't hasn't dried oh no shoot Never mind, I'll do it, redo it really, really quickly. So please wait until your nail varnish dries and maybe you start wearing your bracelet because it can slip apart. 
Um, Lon is saying, I can only do a few before my chamber, but too bad. I never get to do enough to improve my loop turning, which is very annoying. Just do a little but often. Just do like every single day, just do 10 and that's it. And next day do 10 again. And, and, and over time, it will all build up. And it's, you need to build up the muscles as well. The, the, you know, when children are learning to write and they make them to draw all sorts of different in this little motor technique in your hand, what you have to, um, really master and some children master it quicker and they handwriting is so much neater and some other children like my son <laughs> whose handwriting is not so great they um, they will need much more practice with to practice this motor skills now of course with jewelry making it's exactly the same but instead and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it instead of doing the finger motor skill those motor skills are in your wrist because that's what you're doing you're turning and then you and and these motions unless if you you know you don't really use them so much in in real life because you are so focused on what you're doing and that's why little but often you do need to practice it and then um then you will be fine you can use any nail varnish. Um, this one is just out of boots, but I had uh, this one is Rimmel. It doesn't really matter as long as it's just a clear nail varnish. But if you got color, it doesn't really matter because it will be inside that bead as well, just to hold them together. Um, Debbie's saying she's doing little but often as well. Um, Leanne is saying, sorry, I missed it. I have to rush the repair. So Leanne, do we just made a little more like a high look lookalike bracelets, more commercial style, just in case if you are going to do any of those festivals and you want to sell any of your jewellery, these are the ones, I'm not, not going to put them to, on top of each other because they look nice on their own, these are the ones, but, um, you know, I, I think they're easy sells because they are, speak to a lot of people, I, lo I really do love them, I love the hanger beads, and because, if you just if you didn't have this hanger beads, you would just have a beads going all the way around. But by adding by just adding that little hanger bead on there, just the old decoration, um, it makes it much more special and much more interesting. And and you know it doesn't take much to add a hanger bead to it. So that's um that that's what we've been doing today. Really really easy technique. Um, Lon is saying sounds like a plan. I could do 10 minutes on a night with a nice cup in front of TV. Yeah, that's all you do. So if you, uh, no, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go and grab it, but I'll pop a picture or I message you a picture, Lona. Um, what, like, we did the stone chip and the crystal bracelet and um, you need to turn a lot of loops. So on one bracelet, you would be turning probably... Uh, or more, you might have seen it um, twice a man, so about, I don't know, maybe 90 or 100 loops. So do something like that because it doesn't matter if your loops are not the same. They're all going to go together and they're all going to look nice. But um, that's that's the perfect one to. And in fact, actually, I'm going to put in a diary and do something similar like that again because I really love that technique. But that's the one when you can do the beads like do 10 a day and then in the end you can add them all together like we doing the beaded beads yesterday i probably wouldn't do all the beaded beads in one sitting i would make it over several nights and then add it all together into the necklace could you use a clear crafting glue instead of nail varnish so it depending what sort of glue do you use um i have used um pin flares photo glue before for jewelry which was fine um, to glue down cabochons but you really need to lead kind of read the label what glue is um what, what glue like craft glue is for what i super glue again um i like the gel glues the gor gorilla gel glue because that has got a little bit of give and take in it rather than the very sort of a normal super glue you can make your elastic brittle and then it can snap so that's it for me today i guess um i'm, go I'm gonna go i'm gonna go and, and i'm gonna go and restrand this because it's it's really it's really bugging me that it came apart but that's why because we didn't wait 
the nail varnish to dry and I forced the brace up and as I said the material this one is quite slippery so it can slip apart so that's 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 nail varnish or a tiny bit of glue just above the knot and you will be fine could you use hypo cement so I only ever used hypo cement maybe about twice in my life because I didn't like it I didn't like how it behaved but that's me but other people swear by it so I think it depends what you used to and what you can use comfortably I, I wouldn't this I, I would not say I don't recommend hyper cement but it's not something what I use but um, if you check with the ladies in the group and just pop a post up in the handmade group and if you're not in a handmade group go and join the handmade group the totally beats handmade group because um there is so oh, not I wanted to come back here there is so many nice like-minded people in there and just pop pop a question in there Michelle and say like Ladies, or have you ever been using hyper cement or what, what do you think of it? And then people who use it more often can give you a better um, a better answer on that one because I think I only use it like twice and then, then it all gone off and I had to, had to tr throw it out. So I, I wasn't very impressed with it, but maybe I wasn't using it the right way or, you know, so ask, ask the ladies, our community, there is just so many nice people in there and they will, they will, they will tell you what they think of it. Right, so that's it for me today. Um, tomorrow, what we're doing? Ooh, tomorrow we're doing the pendants. I cannot wait. I really do do love these ones. Um, we did the pendants last month, which was more of a taller pendant with crystal beads in the front of it. And this one, I'm I'm going to turn you down and you, and I'm going to show this to you because I really do love this one. So this one is has got a rivoli in the middle. So we're encasing the rivoli within those pearls. So slightly smaller and we're going to learn a different way to do our bells. So we have done POT bell before. We've done um, just a single loop. We used a closed ring as a bell. But this one we're going to do a little beaded bell going all the way around. Something a little bit different from what we've done before. But I really do love it. Now these ones are, we can make them as pendants. And Simon is um, he's putting a bundle pack together for us for this for tomorrow. Bless him. Um, you can make them singly as pendants or you can make them as earrings as well. Because they are, they're not too big. So if I come back to the main camera and I just hold it in front of my ears. Can you see? That way they, they, they are right size for earrings as well. You could use it for all sorts of different bits of pieces. I, I love it. You know, you know me, me and stitching beads. That's, 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 I love doing that one. Right, everybody have a lovely day. It looks like actually is, and just go out and see the weather. Oh, look, it's, it's all cleared up here now. So it's not over customer and nice and sunny. It looks a bit breezy, but um, may, maybe I managed to go for a quick walk around the block. Um, a lunchtime so let's see everybody take uh, do you ever make a beaded spider Sarah is asking yes we did last year for um actually i show you because you can search on our website uh, by date so i'm going to go into i'm going to go back to the main website and i'm going to go into video tutorials and instead of looking by date I'm going to look by, but you can either look by kind or either look by technique, either one of those, you, you will, you will come across it. So if you go into techniques, you're going to go down and look for the wire, working with wire technique, and it will be in there somewhere. scrolling this we've done a lot of things with wire last year spooky spiders there we go 4th of october we did it so now, now we've got the date it's 4th of october you can look by the date as well but we did we did the spiders and if you click into that page you can start the tutorial itself and i did it with christopher and uh, we will show you how to do the spiders all the way let me just go in more of it so and christopher bless him he was distracting me all throughout the life because he just kept playing with the spiders what he made <laughs> well, i loved it he, he was he's a little cutie really but um there is the 
And there's a tutorial for you. So 4th of October, we made those spiders. Uh, Tiny Steak September, no, it was 4th of October. That's, that's why I went in. And this is why it's good, what we did on the website, that you can go and search by the different things. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for Halloween this year. Um, maybe we do a witch or something. I don't know. We see. We come up with something. It was fun. It was really fun to do the spiders because it was just something different, what we never done before. And I love implying your jewelry making skills into home decor as well right my lovelies have a lovely day and i will see you tomorrow keep safe keep on crafting keep on beading and i'll see you tomorrow